Hello again, and I know it's been a while, I haven't posted any videos, and it's because I'm doing a new project on a new YouTube channel, which I would really like you to check out, if you would. So this is a little preview of the first video I made about the Portuguese crisis of 1383 to 1385. Um, yeah, if you would like to check out, please do, uh, the rest of the video is in the other channel. The channel is called History Peasants, and I will be talking about more unknown history, like um, the Greek War of Independence, um, maybe the Peninsula War, I'll may be a series about that, the Second Silesian War between Denmark and Prussia, uh, the Carlist Wars in Spain, um, of course also some Portuguese history, maybe I'll do something about the Reconquista, maybe something about the Hudson Bay Company, I don't know. It will just come, and yeah, if you like to suggest something, please go over to the other channel and support me there. I'll of course be still doing some videos here, but that will be more gameplay and not some history stuff. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you like this little preview, and that you will go over to the other channel and hit like. Yeah, so, thank you. Hello there! In this episode, we will be talking about the Portuguese crisis of 1383 to 1385, a turbulent time in the Hundred Years' War when Portugal didn't have a king upon its throne and Castile, weak from a civil war, was trying to put a Castilian king on it. From the start of the 14th century and up to the 1350s, Europe had suffered a big economic crisis. To make it all worse, in the 1340s the plague came along and killed millions of people. Furthermore, multiple wars were taking place in Europe. The French were fighting the English, and the English were fighting the Scots. In the Iberian Peninsula, Castile was at war with Aragon and with itself, with one side being backed up by France and the other by England. All these conflicts helped the military development to grow on all sides, and these will be showcased in Portuguese crisis of 1383 to 1385. So let's start with the Castilian Civil War. King Pedro I of Castile was fighting his half-brother and claimant to the throne, Enrique of Trastamara. Pedro's side was backed by England, and Enrique's side was backed by France and Aragon. Yes, the same Aragon with which Castile was at war with. In 1369, after 18 years of fighting, Enrique of Trastamara killed Pedro in a castle south of Madrid, thus winning the civil war and ending the war with Aragon. His next action was to cancel the Castilian alliance with England and starting a new one with France. Meanwhile, in Portugal, in January 1367, King Pedro I of Portugal died, not to be confused with Pedro of Castile. His son and heir to the throne, Fernando, became king and would take Portugal to a whole other direction in the way it will be ruled. But before we go into that, we need to talk about a bit the Portuguese royal family. Dom Pedro I of Portugal, keeping up with European royal traditions, had of course a mistress. And with this mistress, he had a son named João. So this makes the future king, King Fernando, and João half-brothers. João was the grandmaster of the Order of Avis, therefore he was also known as the Master of Avis. This is important to know, as he will play an important role further in the video. Portugal and Castile had always had close bonds to each other. More often than not, Portugal's queens were Castilian and Castile's queens were Portuguese. King Pedro's mother was a Castilian and so was Fernando's mother. This wasn't the case for Don Juan's mother, who was a Portuguese and daughter of a simple merchant. This will become helpful for him in the future. After the victory of Enrique, many Castilian nobles who had been on the defeated side fled to Portugal. Here the Castilian nobles convinced the young King Fernando to lay claim to the Castilian throne. King Fernando was the great-grandson of King Sancho IV of Castile, so he could actually claim the Castilian throne. King Enrique of Castile was too but he was a bastard child and a legitimate son, meaning he wasn't really supposed to ever sit on the throne. In 1369, King Fernando started what would later become known as, as the First Fernandian War. Not what you'd call excess, and he ended signing a treaty in 1371 where he gave up his claim to the Castilian throne. This wasn't enough for the Portuguese king though, as he went to war again in 1372, when John of Gaunt, the English Duke of Lancaster, who was married with a Castilian princess, tried to do the same as Fernando had done one year earlier, and laid claim to the Castilian throne. But before Portugal and England were even ready to attack, the Castilian forces were already at the gate of Lisbon. 
A peace treaty was made where Portugal was forced to support Castile and France fight England in the Hundred Years' War. In June 1373, an alliance was formed between Portugal and England, which broke the Portuguese promise to Castile and France. For Portugal, it was important to have an ally from the area around the English Channel, so Portuguese trade ships could reach the Flemish and German ports without being raided. For England, it meant a safe place to disembark its troops in the Iberian Peninsula. Yet again, in 1381, after the death of King Enrique, the Duke of Lancaster yet again saw an opportunity to seize the Castilian throne, and Portugal decided to help. This war would then become known as the Third Fenelind War. As the other wars, this war would be a short one, ending just a year after. In 1383, a third and important treaty was signed. In this treaty, King Fernando I of Portugal agreed on the marriage of his daughter Beatriz of Portugal with King Juan I of Castile. As King Fernando's intentions were to form a union of the kingdoms of Portugal and Castile, rules were applied. The most important rules of the treaty were the Corte, which were a symbol of nobles, were the only power to allow Portugal and Castile to unite. The next king of Portugal will be the son of Beatriz and Juan I. If Beatriz died without an heir, Juan I of Castile will become king of Portugal. And until Beatriz and Juan I had a son, Queen Leonor Delch would be regent of Portugal. The treaty was respected and Juan and Beatriz got married in May 1383. This marriage was very controversial 